Okay, on today on Let's Draw, what I'm working on is I'm kind of going back to my Japanese airplane project, uh, or I'm not sure. I was wanting to model an engine for the Japanese airplane. Uh, I had a request from War Thunder from a fellow live subscriber, and he, I guess, is was trying to work on this engine. And this is an interesting article that I think is on Google. I'm not really much for Google or Facebook and stuff. This is the Bristol Mercury 8, which I guess, I don't know if it was in this airplane or if this is just his uh, banner. Uh, he says the Forker D20.21 was powered by this 9-cylinder Bristol Mercury 8 radial engine. Uh, as you can read it, the main diameter is about 1.30 meters, which I could probably scale once I, uh, this, the Mercury 8 delivers, you know, it tells you the performance, 730 horsepower at 30 level, 825 and 830, about 4,000 meters. Okay. And this is, uh, excuse me, this is his, uh, basically rendered version of this engine with having... Uh, I think basic textures are actually I think this is he's colored it in blender, but he doesn't have it textured yet So he has 13 steps This is what it looks like when it's finished. He's got some carburetor tubes on it And I think the exhaust tubes in the back and these little funnel things in between it are a cooling Designed to help cooling air run down into it and stuff and so on and you can see it's finned But that fins actually like a UV map so we'll go back up through it. Uh, and anyway, I had a person ask me to see if I could basically draw this engine. So that's what I'm attempting to do is draw it or as close as I can get to it. Uh, the first picture he explained that he made the nine the nine sided cylinder and or the nine he used the cylinder and he made it a nine side, which is called a uh, can't even remember, not a decagon that's ten sided. Hepagon, I think it's called a hepagon or a hecagon. Is a nine sided cylinder. But anyway, he the main thing is nine sided. You can tell that the cylinder right behind it he has is eighteen sided and he's applied the smoothing, but he kept the flat surfaces here. And then uh, excuse me. I thought he had went to twenty seven sided, which seemed like that would be uh that seemed to me that that would be somewhat practical, but he actually, I think, used an 18-sided here, too, which he might have just ran this through and made it smaller on the other side. Uh, what he did do, though, which is interesting, is that the closer I look at this, is he did a lot of beveling and loop tooling, and he put a lot of triangles in here. And from what I've been told or seen on tutorials, you don't want triangles if you could at all avoid them. Which, I'm not really sure why, because some of the other programs use triangles, and that's all they use. They call them polygons, and they're just triangles, basically, and there's nothing but triangles. But uh, the way I've always drawn stuff, I've always tried to keep things more or less square or hexagon or whatever, but not triangles. And I was looking at this shape, and I was also looking down here in the pictures where... He more or less has the finished product where that curves down. And I can see where they did the math. They wanted the flat spots for these push rods where they connect into this uh, round part of the front of the crankcase. And I think 27 would do the trick just as well as 18. It would have a little bit more, but th this is kind of what I have come up with. Uh, I, have, I have the 18-sided cylinder here that I actually I actually made the nine sided first then I made this 18 sided and I scaled it basically shaped it to what I'm think I'm seeing in this picture because I'm actually just doing this by sight uh, the person that drew this in their article says they actually have pictures of this engine and scale drawings of it and I don't know where they got them exactly from but uh, Okay, so anyway, I made this nine-sided first 
we look at it from the front and when it made it it actually put the flat on the bottom so I rotated 180 and then I pushed my three I went from the side and then I made sure that this was a square well actually from the top I went from the top because you're looking actually on the square but I made sure that, that, that this was a square it wasn't a rectangle it's an actual square it's the same exactly on all four sides with the uh, grid lines okay then I had put in my 18 sided cylinder and, and it made it in the same place I drug it out and scaled it and got it just kind of running in there and I connected it as an object and then I went with the 27 with the 27 sided cylinder and I brought it out and scaled it down and then I went off the edge and I just basically stretched it out into three sections to make this curve and if this curve is not quite curved enough what I can do push my, whoops, push my three what I can do is push my Z I'm in edit mode I, I can basically just take these here if I need to and I can grab them on the Y and I can stretch them out a little bit if I need to and play around with this because I think that just needs a little bit more grab to the Y give or take like that maybe but anyway I can point is I can play with it and, and go into object mode and that's basically I think That's basically what I'm seeing. Save this right quick. If you guys watch my videos, you know I save a lot. Okay, so this is basically, I think, what I'm looking at here. Let's go back up. Right, right, uh, right here. This, this is, this is basically what I'm trying to get to look at, and I'm not sure what scale he's in. Knowing the, knowing the. Uh, that he said that this, uh, and I think it's in this next one, no, the first one, that it's about 1.3, it's 1 meter, should be about 1 meter and 30 centimeters uh, with the diameter. He says the main diameter, so I'm just basically guessing that's about the diameter across the engine here. So once I actually get this thing drawn out as close as I can get to this, then I'm going to scale that to... 1.30 meters in the blender then that's how I'll export it <laughs> and I either need to get this person's email so I can send it directly to them which I'll ask them about or if they don't mind then I'll, what I'll do is I'm actually going to uh, post this engine on War Thunder Live as a model so if anybody's following along or they're wanting to draw their own aircraft and they want one with a radial engine and they're not really choosy because you could actually just scale us a little bit and stuff like that i i might make two variations of it because i think the the japanese radial engine didn't have like uh like if we go back to here it didn't have these little cooling tubes but it was a nine cylinder engine and uh of course i would might take out this little shelf here that's on this one because on in the japanese airplane the actual they had one cylinder that was straight down and then these two offset cylinders was actually on top is the way they are you could basically flip it upside down and stuff but it didn't have these uh funnels you know it didn't look exactly like this this is this is actually a pretty specific engine so anyway i promised him i'd see what i could do with it so i'm i'm that's what i'm working on is trying to trying to trying to draw this out now one of the things that the uh, person in the article did on this thing is he did some things with some modifiers that i'm not quite uh is versed in he actually basically set this thing up so that he could draw he he started one cylinder and then he copied it and he put it all the way around this and then he set it up to where so as he drew, drew 
an object or he drew part of the cylinder it literally drew it on all the other eight cylinders it copied it with a mere modifier with which is pretty pretty amazing i haven't dinked around and experimented with that uh to me it would seem like it would be just as maybe advantageous or just as uh just as to me it seemed it would seem like it's just as easy if i actually drew one cylinder and drew the complete thing and drew the push rod and you know everything that's exactly in the same place on this other engine here like in other words if i drew this cylinder and i drew these uh carburetor two get off me if i drew this cylinder and i drew these carburetor tubes and i drew these push rods now you can see a couple support rods here that are a little different that looks like it's on the three cylinders but not on the other five kind of thing so anyways everything that's identical on these cylinders if i drew if i drew this complete cylinder with this push rod and these carburetor tubes and these valve rocker valve arms and that and then i drew like one of these uh these cooling funnel setups and then i duplicated that and uh, rotated it 60 degrees I think it was 60 degrees, 60 times 20 or 60. I mean, anyway, I'll fi figure it back out. He, he even says it down in here, actually, which is kind of interesting. He, uh, uh, is it here. Anyway, it's just, it's mathematical. You know, he, he does the object and he puts them on, you know, here you go. 360 divided into 9 equals 40. So he just did them 40 degrees. So. Like I said, he set them up to where he could just draw them all at once, basically, which actually he didn't. He drew one basic cylinder, then he set them up, and then he later made it to where he could uh, do them like this mirror modifier, where he drew them, where he drew all the details together. But what I'm saying is that you could do it that way, and that's pretty neat, and it's really neat that Blender will let you do it that way, and I haven't messed with it any. But I can also do the same thing if I just totally draw a whole cylinder with the funnels and the push rods and everything. And then, same thing, if I just duplicate duplicate it, go 40 degrees, line it up with them verts, uh, duplicate another one, 40 degrees, line it up with them verts, and then I'll end up with the same thing. Just It's just kind of a different process. And it's maybe not easier it seems easier to me because i don't know how to really play with the mirror modifiers like he's doing but it is interesting that he put that in his article or it'd be something that maybe i wouldn't play around with in the future to try to figure out but i think i can just as easily uh draw this i shift that i think i could just about as easily draw this uh doing the way I'm, what I'm talking about okay if I look at this again now if you notice on this engine uh, they have kind of a looks like a brace and to me again it seems like he really seems like he, he uh, if you look at the pro finished product the way that's sitting out there and you look at the little edge on there and then if you come back to this Seems like he drew a lot of extra verts and triangles just to get that little flat shape. And I think it could be done a little bit easier. So this thing comes down, it comes out a little bit, and then it basically runs into this ring. And then this ring has a little bit of a lip and has this flat surface on it. So if I come in here, I'll try, I'm going to see if I can do that emulate that here go to three go back into object mode actually go into edit mode sorry and go to lines and i want to select this line and actually and see there's a face here but it doesn't really matter it doesn't add any extra dots to do what i'm doing whether if there was a face on every one of these lines it really wouldn't wouldn't be a problem so I actually wanted that line. I want to hit Alt though, so that I have the whole ring. And as you can see, it actually kind of like selected the like if we went to face. I'm not selecting the face, but we're in lines. 
Go back into dots, okay. And go to three. And what's really good, I can come back, take a little look at this. So I'm just guessing. And like I said, once once I get this whole thing, even if I have kind of like the same shape, but it's it looks like it's stretched longer here, or it's too much diameter, I can always just basically grab those sections and manipulate them with the scaling. But the closer I can get to start with, the better. So this looks like with this, it even almost looks like he uh, could have drug this out and made this whole kind of dome shape with this shaft shape here and then actually drew that separate but I think I think it would be easier actually just to make this thing right now uh, so what I want to do is actually go from the front which would be one and I want to go extrude and then scale and I want to come out I think let's come out to about a little bit bigger than what we had and then let's go from three now what's cool is that that stretched it out flat so then I can take another gander at this picture uh, and it's smaller yeah so actually I went way too big I think I actually need to scale in just a little bit and that looks like it that cylinder looks like it's tapered a little bit so let's go back into blender this actually looks like it's tapered down a little bit so if I go back to one just push scale this time and scale it back about there okay now we can also Let's go three. Looks like that looks like it's tapered down a little bit, which what we would have to do there. Yeah, hit box. We actually we need to hit Z first. Z. We need to hit box, and then we need to scale. Mm, maybe about like that. Okay, let's look. Let's see what that looks like. I think that looks a little bit more like what it looks like okay now what we can do now who except for I got both lines so we want we don't want that we want to hit a go back into lines I want this outside line let's go alt oh outside line there we go three okay and then we can go extrude We're going to E, and then we want to hit to, uh, why have I got a blue line? It shouldn't be Z, it should be Y. Y, okay, there we go. And we want to drag that out. I would say about there, and that might be a little too big, okay. And then, we want to go back to the front. Uh, let's look at this picture right quick okay we have a very tiny lip which is kind of interesting though because the way that that lip looks to me like that looks like that lip is just on top and around to the side that's why he started doing these uh, funky triangle things which mm, kind of and kind of don't make sense to me Let's want to see what it looks like on the engine. Yeah, looks like he has these lips, and all of a sudden, this, like this thing, like they had would basically the way they would have had to build that is they would have had to machine this part and actually like mill that out of a taper, which is kind of. I'd really like to see a picture of it and see if they really did it that way, because that would be quite a bit of. Seems to me that would be quite a bit of work for no reason, you know. Uh, you you or it, it could be molded that way, of course, too. Like if it was cast that way, but I still kind of wonder why they would put a lip there and have that tapered out. It's kind of hard to see, though. I think it would make more sense, or from from the way it's shaded, that that is just a rec this little flat part up here is kind of like a recessed part, and it looks like. Because I'm not sure if this is a motor mount, but the, but they definitely got it bolted, and then looks like it comes up. 
It looks like they do that on three sides of this thing. Is that they have some kind of a bracing mount or whatnot. It's not real. We can look at this final one too, which it kind of, yeah, it just looks like these are bolted on here and they come up and then down that, same thing. That don't look like it's tapered. It looks like that lips around there. So that, that's, I'm going to go with that to start with. And if it's not, then I'll have to blend it in and fix it later. Uh, three. So we want another lip on here is what we want. And how we get another lip on here is we go extrude to the Y. And we bring a little, little tiny bitty lip out here. Okay, and then we look at this picture again. Whoops, that ain't the picture I want. I want to go back up to here. Because I can't see it that close. So it looks, that looks like that. Looks like I got that little lip there. And it don't look like it's in the back. It looks like it's flush with the back, but it's got the lip at the front. So we will go with that to start with. And now what we want to do would be from the front come straight up and put this little t-bar section in here and that t-bar looks like it is just a smidgen uh, it's almost flush with the round part of that but totally not it looks like it has just a hair elevation and then I'm gonna have to kinda guess the little t section out here so let's go back into blender and we'll deselect because our bar, let's look at this from the front actually. Okay, the problem is we don't have an actual straight line. But what we do have is pretty close to it. Because we're actually looking from here. So if we go into vertice mode, and show you what we can do here we can actually go z i think and we want we're actually grab whoops we're almost grabbing more than four here just want these two and these two and i'll show you what i'm doing we'll go back to the front see what we did is we've grabbed four vertices okay Okay, we'll go to one. Now what we want to do here with these four vertices, look at this picture again. Ooh, actually maybe they went a little higher than that. Yeah, because on his he's got them centered there. Yeah, but pretty much from the center. I think he had his rotated more centered. I think I think he actually had the, this set up here like centered. So he went dead from the center. I'm going a little bit from above the center. But I, I think it's so close that it's not. Either that or I can't tell because of the angle. Either this is the center or this line here is the center. But I, I actually think he has the face centered. So I might be all right. So let's try this. Let's go to the blender. And let's go extrude to the Z. And let's go straight up. A straight up, straight up, straight up, just about. Uh, okay, we can see this ring. It hits this line and it goes a little bit higher than that line. Okay. But we're also going to want our T's. Uh, so let me figure out how I'm going to put the T in here. Actually, I can go too high to start with, and then I can always level it down too, which is kind of cool. So, let's hit Z. Okay, if you notice, I brought up this. Actually, I'm way too high, way too high, but that's okay. I think that's okay. Uh... Okay, so what we can do now, let's go 
from the top, see what we can do here. Uh, I think I can hit E, which is extrude, and then I can hit scale. And I can bring these out like this to about there. Okay, now if you notice, it also beveled them wide though. Okay, let's look from the front. Now, it did bring them flush, which is cool, and it brought them to the same point, so they're the same measurement. But again, if we look at them from the top, the problem is that we uh, got them beveled. They're at an angle, so to get rid of that angle, we will hit Z, and we will box, we'll go box, like this because we got one line here and we will go scale on the Y and we're gonna hit zero then we're gonna hit a okay and then we're gonna do the same thing with the bottom we're gonna we're gonna go box we're gonna come along here and we're just gonna go just far enough to catch those there without catching those front ones and we're gonna go S and then Y and then zero. And we got our little vertices straightened out. Okay. Now that I got that done, I can select these two again. Actually I'm gonna save it right quick. And I'm still going to save it in A because I still consider this the basic shape. And I don't think I have screwed up anything that's not real hard to fix yet. So I want these two. And I can control right grab. Control right grab. And then I can hit my mouse wheel and angle it over here so that I can control right grab here. Control right grab here. Okay, I'm going to go back to 1. Okay, now on this, what I want to do is I want to go extrude, and then hit the Z. Then I want to bring these up a little bit. Uh, I'm kind of guessing here. Well, like I said, I can always re-grab these and fix them other than what you want to be careful is uh, sometimes you get into an area where you're grabbing verts and you have some right exactly like you see this big mess of stuff down in here you, you wouldn't want to try to grab these verts like this like with ones right behind it and stuff because you end up grabbing ones on the inside and then sometimes you have a problem okay now one of the tricks I use what I can do is I can actually I can hit A because I already did this we can go into line mode, okay. We can select this line by left clicking on it. I got mine set up for left clicking. If you're brand new into Blender, again, I know you've old guys have heard this and you know all about it, but people that's just starting this don't have no idea about this. If you use May and Autodesk and almost any other drawing program, you select things with the left but mouse button. In Blender, you select it with the right, but you have the option of changing that and I have changed it under user preferences and I show that in some other videos and or if you aren't sure what I'm talking about and you want to know what I'm talking about pop in YouTube click like uh, user preferences blender left mouse click and it'll take you and there's a bunch of people have done like three minute tutorials on how to do it okay now I'm gonna push the control button and then I'm gonna left click this one whoops that's not what I wanted okay so let's go control Z to get away from that I just wanted this button uh, actually I think I need to push shift and grab this one there we go I pushed control so it ran around the connecting surface because since there's a whole line that connected from there to there but all I wanted was these two on the top here so okay then I'm gonna push I can color it in too and push F which puts a face across there, connects those two with a face. And then I push A, and then that is kind of our shape for this. 
Okay, and I think let's come back into Blender. Let's go to Verts. Let's grab, let's go from the side here. And actually, I'm going to leave it shaded. But what I want to grab here is I want to grab, I want to grab these six. So I, I can use, it, box is kind of easier, but like I said, sometimes box, it doesn't grab. Let me make sure I got these six. Come over here. I'm going to grab these six. And what's nice about box too is that it also box usually will grab, you know, without, it won't deselect your other ones. Okay, so what I want to do now is go to one, and I want to grab to the Z, and I want to bring this down to where this is just, just a smidgen over that, over that. Is as far as I know, like I said, that now I'm not sure. I'm not sure I might need to, I might have to drop these four quite a bit down. I might need to make that thicker. So I'll take a gander at that. See, it seems like that's quite a bit thicker. It has a little lip there, but it has almost double the distance there. It looks like it looks like a little bit further down. So let's come in here and let's hit A. And let's get an angle where I can grab these four. And let's grab an angle where we can grab these four. Okay, let's go back to one. And again, let, let's grab these to the Z and let's bring these down a little bit. And it looks to me like, like it kind of kind of has that shape about there. That still seems like it's not really proportional, but it seems like it's a lot closer than what it did. Now what we're also not looking at, because I'm looking at this at an, trying to look at this at an angle. I'm trying to almost match the angle so that when I, when I look at this picture, mm-hmm. And actually, I think the only difference in this picture and mine, I think I have this thing a little too thick. I think that one's thinner. I think on this engine, this little bar that comes out here is just a lot thinner than the than the one on mine. I think mine's I think mine's way thicker. I'm also not looking at it with comparing it with the shaft and stuff too. I'm kind of comparing it with this. So let's look at them on 32 minutes. No, no, actually, it's pretty thin. I don't know. I'll put some faces in. It. We'll see what we. What we have here. Uh, now again, I could actually delete these faces in here, but it wouldn't change in none of the vertices. Because the way we're going to have to face this thing in is we're going to have to hit A. We're going to have to go into lines. And we're going to have to now, what might be advantageous actually, is down here where you have this funky shading. We go into faces. We actually select that face right there. We'll delete that face. Okay, and that selected the whole face. As you can see, there's a hole there now. And like I said, I could delete. I could literally delete. I could literally come along and delete. I could literally come along and delete all of these interfaces. It really, really basically wouldn't matter. It kind of does on this bottom one, though, because you can see where they run into each other. So if I delete these faces, I'll go ahead and delete them. Okay, now we got a big hole here, just like if you had a hole in a uh, crankcase or something. But the reason I deleted that, anyways, is because what we're going to do here, and... What we're going to do, since this is all flush from the side, this is this this is going to work real good. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we went to line mode. We're going to select this line, and then we're going to hold shift, 
And we're going to select this one, and this one, and this one, and this long one. And we're going to start working around here. Since this, since these lines are parallel, okay, hold shift, grab that one. So we can grab that one, okay, that one, that one. We're going to put a face in here, and since these lines are parallel, it'll be one perfect little flush face, just like if you had a sheet of sheet metal. And this shouldn't be a problem. I should be able to hit F, and it put a face right in there, and A. Now see, I did that, and then actually even what's funny is if I really wanted to, I could have actually deleted all of these lines right here. In fact, I think I will. I'll show you that, because that will get rid of some vertices there. So if I actually, I'm still in lines, I actually selected this line, hold shift, this line, this line, uh, this line, this line, this line, 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 uh, line, 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 line. Now what we can do here too, we don't want to get rid of this one, but we can hit this one, 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 this one. Okay, almost all the way down, but we don't want that last one. Now, what's funny, this will get rid of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It'll get rid of 12 vertices, basically. So if I go Delete, and I go Edges. Now, if you'll notice also what happened when I did that, it got rid of that face, because that face was hooked into those lines. So now, again, we're going to kind of do the same thing we just did, except for what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to select, we're going to like start, yeah, here's good enough. Select that line, and then we're going to hold shift, and we're going to do just what we just did. And again, with these lines being parallel, we can get away with this because it's like one big piece of sheet metal it's all flat it's all the same you can get rid of you can get away with some of this stuff sometimes if you have slight angles but you find you usually have shading problems but sometimes it's funny too because there is actually objects like that that have tapers and stuff and sometimes it's hard to draw in okay so now you see we got rid of those extra things off that cylinder and we hit the f and then A. And if I really wanted to, I could have actually deleted all of these lines here too. But like I said, you'd, to, if I deleted all these lines and I made this thing one big face, uh, if you could see through this and you wanted a face there, sometimes that's advantageous. But it doesn't, it doesn't eliminate dots. But what I just did did eliminate dots. And this line should be parallel. If it's not, that's maybe why we have... I don't know if you can see it, but there's this, this slight triangle shading here where it looks like it makes different faces. So one way to double check that is we go to 3. And we, again, we go to dots. We hit the uh, Z. And then we box that, box this line here, we go S for scale, hit the Y, and the zero, and I know you didn't see anything move, but if there was something microscopically out of place, it's now lined up, should be lined up exactly. Let's see, let's hit A, Z, let's look. And we still have those shadings. Then I have the uh, have the auto smooth and the double sided. Uh, what else could we do here? Select that as a face. Should be flat, but we can go to the toolbar and make sure it's flat. No, maybe it was smooth. Maybe that was the problem. Okay, so now let's check. Let's hit the T. Let's go back to object mode. Um, yeah, that made it flat, but okay, so I see what's going on here. See, I didn't realize this. 
Actually, these faces down here, we need to go to T. We need to go to Edit, Face Mode, and we need to deselect that one that we already selected. And then we need to, uh, we need to select all of these babies. Because we want the smoothness in the, in the cylinder. We want the smoothness around here. But we don't want these smooth, and these are smooth, and that's why that's why I had weird shades. So if I make these all flat, then this should sharpen these edges a little bit, leaving this this still will appear to be round, and it'll appear to be round here. But we want these ones flat. Okay, let's deselect. Let's go into object and see what it looks like. Yeah, see now we got an edge there. So even though this part appears to be a cylinder or smooth you can still kind of see the dots but once you start texturing these and sometimes that takes that away you know but uh, the only way you can kind of get around that is if you do a cylinder that has a whole, whole crap load of points in and you know that's kind of a give and take thing and it's a give and take thing for uh, games and so on for, so forth too because in the uh, uh, you know, on games, if you really look close sometimes on War Thunder or in World of Warships on the ships, the airplanes and stuff, sometimes you can find these little points and circles and stuff like that. So, anyway, like I said, like this is a bevel, but you can kind of see where it's wanting to be flat. It has a really funny shading. Hopefully a texture will take, take that out. Otherwise, I'm going to have to put in flat surfaces and then it starts making, getting rid of that round shape, how they would have actually cast a uh, like a crankshaft for an engine okay so let's take this now we need to go back great quick I'm on 41 minutes I want to shorten this up or I want to finish pretty soon here I don't want to drag this out all day uh, let's go back to edit let's go into lines again okay now this since we want this lip to stay here but we want this. Now again, we're going to go through this thing where... Uh, now see, I could actually do one of two things here. I could actually make the face catch this lip, which I think is kind of cool. Or I could leave these faces smooth and I could, tell, I could actually put a face... I could actually tell us the face all the way across here. Which I'll show you. This would be a simpler method. Would be if if I actually just faced across here. Even though there's some of the face you can't see behind the cylinder, and it might might work and it might be a problem. But if I hit face right now, let's hit A. Let's go to object. Let's go back to dots. Let's go to object mode and see what it looks like. See, so you have this lip and you have this face, but in a sense they're not really stitched together. Okay. Uh, but it seems... I think that smoothed out too. We need to go to edit mode. Let's go to faces. Let's go to this face. Let's make sure it's flat. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Deselect. As I say, it just seemed like it was all rounded. Okay, let's... Uh, let's see what it looks like in object mode now. So see, you got your nice little lip there. It looks like which. Uh, I'm pretty sure those are smooth. You got your nice little lip there. Let's hit A and deselect it. I think we got our lip. I think we got our kind of like our platform there. And uh, the only thing now would be maybe comparing it. Uh, so actually mine looks a little thinner. It looks like this one's a little flatter or a little fatter, I was trying to say. And that makes it, but it does seem like it's almost the same size. Uh, it looks like it's almost... Looks like it's almost out there where the cylinder jugs start, which I think in mine, eh, pretty darn close if you look, 
if you look, like I said, it might not be exact and stuff, but I really, the you know, biggest problem I think I'm going to have scaling this thing is, like I just said, I'm not working from pictures and uh, drawings like the uh, original artist is, so I'm going to do my darndest to get it as close as I can for this gentleman. And I hope that it's, uh, I hope it ends up being satisfactory. If it doesn't, then I will have a, uh, I don't know, what do you call it? I'll have a generic uh, nine-cylinder aircraft engine that I can dink around with and whatnot. And I'll just probably scale it to my airplane. I don't know how many of you, let's save this right quick. And, yeah, let's save it as an A. I'll make it a B when I start putting the other objects on it and stuff and the other details. But if I go in here right quick, let's go open recent... Uh, no, I don't have my uh, Glenn, so I'm going to have to go to open, actually. And then find my, uh, here it is, EY, my, uh, uh, 15B, there it is. This is the airplane that I'm drawing, and it, I have to, oh, okay, I thought I had to reassert the pictures. I don't have to reinsert the pictures. Here's the pictures I'm using for it. And I've actually done, I think, 13 episodes or 12 of this. It took me like 12 episodes to actually draw this because it takes me a lot longer to draw when I'm talking about it and d demonstrating things. And I've got to the point, I thought I did more than the canopy. Maybe I didn't. Because my next thing was going to be to duplicate this canopy along here because basically four sections of this canopy are pretty much the same thing. They're just a little bit smaller and fit inside each other. Which is pretty much just a matter of duplicating this, scaling it, and putting them inside of each other. And then the one thing I'm doing, they have, on the picture they have the uh, canopy slightly open, where on mine it's going to be closed. And then actually the back one's going to be open because there's a, a flex machine gun that comes out on a swivel that's going to fit up above here. And uh, I don't know, you'd have to see some real pictures of this airplane. This is actually a pretty small airplane. The pilot's head and the gunner's head would be real big in here he i don't know if he had a seat with a strap or if he just turned around and basically the seat got out of the way and he actually stood up to shoot the machine gun out of the back of this it's pretty amazing because a lot of these airplanes with rear machine guns basically they run the canopy down and then they have a section where the canopy can fold up in behind them or underneath them and then the machine gun actually they can pull it out and stow it up on a swivel where they they basically eliminate this back so that the machine guns can aim over it. This thing here, they literally made it, I think, where the guy turns around, stands up, and he's strapped in, and he actually kind of shoots it over the, you know, the top of this. But like I said, again, this is actually a pretty small airplane. But this is, did have a nine-cylinder radial engine, and it has 18 of these valve cover, uh, on the cowling, they made the cowling so small that the valve covers, the little rocker valve arms actually pretty much stuck out into these little, they made those little uh, uh, bumps, those little bumps in the cowling so that the uh, rocker arms could actually uh, be covered, but they they literally stuck in, stuck out of the cowling, like around that, and it's, Kind of funny because German, Germany had a few airplanes like they did the same thing. And Italy had a few airplanes that had a similar thing with the cowling and stuff. And it was kind of interesting. It's more of a 1930s kind of 20s and 30s idea. And uh, it's just a little two-plane prop. They put them inside of the uh, B-1 class submarines. And this, ac this aircraft actually holds the distinction of being... Uh, the only aircraft that dropped any type of bombs on the continental United States during World War II. They actually dropped two small, like I think they were around 80-pound incendiary bombs. And Oregon tried to start a forest fire, and it didn't really work because they had had a wet winter. But, uh, you know, and they brought the pilot back in, I think, the early 70s. Actually, went and visited the city and stuff. But uh, the subtle planes, the... Only plane that has that claim to fame that uh, they that they actually bombed, put a bomb on the continental United States with this airplane. 
And I'm up on 49 minutes, so I'm going to call this uh, good for this uh, episode of Let's Draw. And the next episode, uh, some of you are following along, I'm actually doing the Star Trek uh, Dreadnought tutorial also. Uh, but uh, I want to get back a little bit onto this plane. And in the meantime, I'm going to... In the meantime, I'm going to, to stay on... Uh, uh, let's see. Open recent. I'm going to stay on this engine, and uh, so in the next episode, more than likely, I'll uh, keep working on this uh, hub area here to add on to this. And I'm not sure. I don't. I don't think I'm going to put on this uh, backsplash or this engine mounting, this mounting plate or whatever it is. He's got this thing in here in the the back and the black and you can kind of see it in here I, th I think it's supposed to be maybe the airplane frame or you know but anyway that's probably one of the last things I would put on if I put on that and he shows how he draws this hub which seems simple enough if I can kind of copy that and I'll just keep dinking along in steps and seeing if I can get it to look as close as I can to these pictures and or, like I said, if I see stuff that just there's some things that, uh, you know, I think can be drawn simpler a little bit. Not much, just a little bit. Like, I eliminated all those little triangles and stuff like that. But uh, not saying it's better, just the way I prefer it kind of a thing. So, anyway, this is up 51 minutes, so I don't want to hit an hour. And thank you for watching. We will see you in the next episode of Let's Draw.